crazy how one tiny thing can just completely... Now this is really going to be the true test of the M3 and also my mechanical skill. What a journey it's been on already from finding it abandoned on the racetrack to me restoring her, doing rod bearings, steering racks, subframes, boot floor repair, suspension, wheels and even a full interior. This car has had the lot and it's really pushed my mechanical ability. Before the M3 goes to the body shop to touch up all the paintwork that it needs, it would be rude not to test this car out to its full potential and all the work that we've done to it at one of the most dangerous yet fun tracks on this earth. The Nürburgring in Germany. A total of 12.9 miles and 139 corners. It is the longest and most challenging racetrack on earth. With it being also open to the public, you can imagine there's a lot of drama. Now I've never been to the Nürburgring, but I feel like I know it like the back of my hand thanks to this. I've been driving the Nürburgring for a long time now on this, learning the track in an E46 M3. Now I've done two laps on the simulator in a standard E46 M3 with standard road tyres on, measured from the first bridge on the course to the last bridge on the course, which is of course the tourist layout. The dry time of a 7 minute 48. Yes! 7.48 and a very wet time of a 9 minute 31. 9.31. So the challenge in this video is going to be, can the M3 actually make it there and get round the track all in one piece? And two, can we get anywhere close to the time that we set on the game, whether that's a wet track or a dry track? And there's only really one way to find out. Let's go. Now joining me on this journey will be Chris. And that journey starts off in Leicester in the United Kingdom and will continue 504 miles to the Nürburgring. We hopped onto the Channel Tunnel and then within half an hour, we're on the other side in Calais, France, with the remaining 290 miles to go. The M3 was eating up the miles and we managed to get to a place in France called Lille where we stopped off for our second fill up. Okay, so quick fuel update. We've realized that one, the cruise control doesn't work on the E46, which is quite handy on a long trip. And also the heater on the feet is constantly on. So we're down to uh, just the socks at the minute and it absolutely stinks of feet in the car. <laughs> But so far the car's doing well. We're doing pretty good on fuel, around 25 miles a gallon. We've got the next stop in Belgium. And then finally, it's Nürburgring tomorrow. Let's go. Would you hold me if I told so Chris, you? myself, and the E46 powered on into Belgium, where we'd stop at the hotel, and the next morning we'd start the trip from Belgium, where we'd hope to arrive at Nürburgring later that day. over 500 miles in the E46 and we're within 11 miles of the Nürburgring now and the E46 has actually been really good all the way. Touch wood, which is, you sort of doubt yourself because we've literally had the rear subframe off, had the front subframe off, all the suspension off. I don't think there's been anything on this car that I haven't had off. So if anything's gonna come loose or fall off or break, it's kind of gonna happen here. And worst case, on the Nürburgring, which with fingers crossed doesn't happen, but within, we are within touching distance now of seeing the Nürburgring for the first time. Let's get there. Oh, we need it, I'm so And just like that, we have made it. The E46 has made it. Chris has made it Woo! to the Nürburgring. 
Come on, this is going to be such a surreal moment getting on the track and driving the E46. 12 and a half miles around it and trying to beat in the score on the Gran Turismo game. And everything was going so well until... Now this was purely my fault. The police had pulled us over on the side of the road. For one, that we didn't have a front number plate. And also for two, we wasn't meant to stop at the side of the Nürburgring. It's a towing zone. It wouldn't be a Europe trip without some sort of confrontation with the police. Um, we wasn't supposed to stop outside the front of that Nürburgring. And also, well, we had to kind of tape the plate on. <laughs> now today, we can't actually drive on the ring, but tomorrow from 10.30 till it is open to the public as it is a toll road so tomorrow is the day the e46 gets put through its paces fingers crossed for it now with the racetrack being open for anyone to drive as you can imagine there's a lot of crashes which means there's a lot of interesting finds around the outside of the Nürburgring track why has this just become the perfect place look check this out Color as well. Oh my god, I this is asking GT3 RS rear quarter damage. It's a small bit of damage on the headlight. <laughs> Little bumper. It's actually a rear light. It's a headlight if you're in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you do crash your car on the track, then more than likely the insurance will refuse to pay out, which means a lot of cars like this GT3 would just be repaired privately and then put back on the road without a registered title. So when it comes to selling, no one would have even known that it's been in an accident. That's of course, unless you checked it out using Car Vertical, who has sponsored today's video. Now, Car Vertical works in over 20 different countries and it gathers data from so many places to ensure that the car that you're buying is as advertised. Check out this check that I've done on an Audi R8. At the top, I can see a green light that there's been no mileage fraud, a green light that there's been no theft, but there's an amber light for accident, and there's no outstanding finance on the car. As I scroll through the report, I can see every time an ownership's changed, every time it's passed or failed an MOT, but there I can see that damage was detected on the car. I can see that all the mileage lines up throughout the years here, but right here I can see that damage was recorded on this car in 2018. And even better than that, I can scroll through the report and find the actual pictures of the damage where it was auctioned off at the car crash auction. And just to show you what a good report looks like, here's a report on my E46 M3. All green lights at the top, all the mileage, all lines up, and there's no report for damage. So to check your car out or a car that you're potentially about to buy, you can do by clicking the link in the description box below. And with my link, you're going to save yourself a nice bit of cash as well. Thanks, Car Vertical. So today was the day I got to tackle the Nürburgring. I woke up early to visualize the track and fill up. 33 liters of the finest 102 Ron fuel. Here we 75 go. euros. 75 <laughs> euros. So this is it. We've got my ticket. So we're going out for the starting lap first. Remember, this is a toll road, so you don't actually need your helmets. You overtake on the left-hand side only. There's no speed limits. But hopefully, we get round in one piece and the car is absolutely sound. Let's do this. Here we go. It's time to die. This is so weird. Like I've done this so many times on Gran Turismo. So we went out for the first sighting lap, just to confirm everything was exactly like the game. Ride it all the way out. The track's wider than there, imagine. Yeah, it felt tight in the game, didn't it? I think it's a let off here. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ, yeah. You could well easily overcook that, couldn't you? Now, even though we were on a starting lap, I wasn't driving particularly slow. But as you can see in the top right hand corner, on the Gran Turismo game, I was considerably quicker. So when we got out for the actual timed lap, I'm going to have to up my game a lot. Obviously, we don't have a passenger in the game and a boot full of luggage, but I was going to try my hardest to try and get somewhere close to the time. And even on our first starting lap, it wasn't long before a yellow flag because somebody had had an accident. 
Oh, he's got the M2 on the street. It's got this. Oh, you got a yellow flag. Yellow, yellow flag. flag. Yellow flag. Someone's had a there. It'll give us time for the brakes yeah, to go no down. Yeah, no overtaking it. But first, first impressions. I'm, my heart is beating so fast. I've got, I've got sweaty palms. We've got the oil temperatures risen very, very high. Um, yes, it's, it's scary. This is one of the scariest tracks. Oh dear. Oh God. Jesus. We've got a mini off the track. Poor that lad. didn't take long, did it? Oh God, that's a bad one. He's okay though, yeah, he is he's okay. okay. He's having a fag, he's all right. There's a... <laughs> he's actually had him having a fag. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. And that's how bad it can turn quickly. Like. So if the track wasn't scary enough, after seeing that crash, it shook us up just a little bit. But we continued on the lap, taking in every corner, preparing ourselves for the next time lap. He's not gone for it. He oh, has. Yeah. He's entered. We've we're entered. On it. Oh, we're it's on Steve. the famous carousel. <laughs> oh my oh, God! He's pumping his own. <laughs> and that's it. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> and then coming back to the final bridge for the first sight in that. Is this where we'd stop the timer? And then we'd stop the timer right now. Now. Well done, mate. Let the brakes fall. Yeah. Well done, M3. Yes. It's a. Uh, Give there. the engine a bit of air. What a lap. That was way more fun than I expected. And that was just the first lap. We're not going to be breaking any records for the first lap, but obviously we had a yellow flag, but that was, that was so much fun. The carousel was hilarious. The next lap, I think we're going for a time. Oh, I think we've got to. We've got to go How for a time. How are you feeling? How's the car feeling? Like, I, it's just nervous all the way around. Yeah. But no, the M3 has made it one lap. The oil temperature did rise quite high, but I don't know what's kind of normal in this. I've not really thrashed it that hard on the actual public roads, but that was, I reckon it was around 120 degrees at oil temp. So I will check the oil before we go out again. That was, that, I can't explain how much fun. It was so much fun. I'm sweating, absolutely sweating. But now, this is where the time comes in. I have no idea how far off we're gonna be, yeah, but know. playing on the game, you've got balls about this big, and then in real life, they go to about this big. There's only one way to find out how fast we can drive around the Nürburgring. Let's do it. 7.48 to beat, not that we're gonna beat it, but we can give it a good go. I might give way to this M2, which is already coming from it. Jesus. Another M2 and an M5. Wow. And time has started. M5 is coming. Wow, they're flying. Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go quiet for this whole lap. It's alright, I'll commentate. A bit. <laughs> Now before it all went wrong, we was making up some really good time on the lap. And the car was feeling really good and I felt so familiar with the track thanks to the actual racing game. But there is one long flat out straight after this corner right here, which I think the E46 just gave up on. Now, almost instantly after that corner, things went downhill. Corner. Oh, I've lost power and the engine management oh, lights no. on. I've lost power, I've oh. lost power. We're on a power loss. 
No. We're no, we're on hot as well. Oh, get, I've got get no right, power. Get to the right. Get to the right. I've got no power, we're cut out. Oh. We've cooked something. No, M3, we've got nothing. Now on the Nürburgring, we know there are huge fines for being towed off. So we was desperate to get the E46 out of limp mode and going again. So we decided to try and diagnose the issue by plugging in a device into the OBD reader. Can we get up this hill? Oh my days, man. Okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. The M3 was losing power quick. My foot was flat to the floor. We don't want to be told about that. Jesus. We're not checking the car. It's been taking a while, isn't it? 56%, 60%, 12 issues found. We're going to have to get towed off the track. Do you reckon? Yeah, we can't, I ain't going to make it round. We've literally got no power at all. Issues are being cleared all up. Despite our efforts, the M3 was not coming out of limp mode, and this was the code that it was bringing up. An actual fault with the ABS ECU, but I couldn't see why an ABS fault would cause it to go into limp mode. And we are off the track. Let's find out what is wrong with this, because yeah. we are not getting up that way. Now first off, we started with the old simple off and on trick. But that didn't seem to work. I was hyping up the M3 and then we finally went for the actual main track. Just to uh, give everyone an example of what's going on, we are on the corner just before the carousel. The car's decided to go. Now the car mechanically sounded fine, so I could only think that it was some sort of electrical issue which was causing it to go into limp mode. Now right here is the ABS module, but I couldn't see anything obvious on why it was failing, unless something had been cooked in the heat. But the inevitable happened, and it looks like we're going to be towed off the track. They're calling the tow truck. I dread to think how much it's actually going to cost, but we're about to find out. <laughs> oh, we're going to crane it on. <laughs> Now from this point, I can see the whole trip has definitely got a lot more expensive. Which I think it's the perfect time to tell you that the M Sport hoodies are back in stock. Or if you just want to show you support, you can hit that subscribe button and hit the like button below. Oh, just Sometimes things that turn out to be a really good idea and then a lot of the time they're not. It looks pretty clean underneath though. It looks like you did a good job, pal. Looking nice. So we finished the lap off in a way that, well, I didn't expect to. On the back of a pickup truck. No, he's not. He's carouseling. Oh but we tried God. to see the brighter side of things. <laughs> 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 and an un unsuccessful lap and also we've been trailered off we've got the full experience and um, I'm glad to share it with all of you guys including Chris as well so We had no idea where they were actually taking us or how much this was even going to cost. We could only sit and wait to find out. But then we finally arrived at this place. Hello. Can you go to the office? Yeah, we sure can. Tell me a truth now then. How much does that just cost me? For the transport? Yeah. 285. Oh, okay. Oh, that's yeah. alright. Okay. We thought you were going to need We thought it was a thousand. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and for a crash, uh, 300. Oh, the crash is only 15 euro more. Oh, wow, bargain. <laughs> so, with the recovery fee paid, the next thing to do is try and work out what exactly was wrong with the M3. First off, I started by checking all the fuses to do with the ABS module, but all seemed fine. Ideally, I could have done with a more in depth diagnostic tool so I could get some live data to see what exactly was going wrong. But that's when we got recommended a local specialist called Peter. A guy 
a know-all guy called Peter and we're going to his workshop. Fingers crossed that he's gonna have the part we need or be able to diagnose it a bit better than the tools and the computers that we have. Another 100 euros later, we arrived at Peter's workshop and it seems we come to the right place. Loads of E46s kicking around. Now Peter, who is an absolute legend, plugged in his diagnostic tool, which was a lot more advanced than ours, and straight away picked up that we was having an issue with the throttle actuator. This is uh, actuator from a throttle. Oh, throttle actuator. Mm. Oh, right, what? okay. Which made so much more sense. So the reason we're not getting any power to the engine because the actuator, which opens up to let air into the engine, is not opening wide enough when we press the pedal down. So now Peter was going to check whether it was an issue with the throttle pedal or the actual throttle actuator was stuck. And after a few tests, we can confirm that it is a problem with the throttle actuator. The only issue is now, can we get a throttle actuator? Um, and can we fit it? <laughs> and after some very anxious moments of trying to search for one in Germany, as if by magic, Peter whipped one out of the garage. What are the chances? But we've definitely came to the right place. And he was straight on with removing the intake manifold to access the throttle actuator, which sat just underneath it. It made actually a nice difference for me to sit back and watch somebody else do the work, especially after all the stress of breaking down on the track. Go down as a legend in my city, cause we beat the streets, trying to spread the wealth around the block, no, I can't keep from me. Tell me I should leave. I see the bigger picture and it's way bigger than me. Can't be living like a king, but my people need to eat. If I got it, then you got it, we gon' get back on our feet. But it's safe to say Peter knew his way around this engine like the back of his hand. And within minutes, it was all back together with a new throttle actuator on. Would it work? Here we go, come on, come on, yeah, we've got, it's working. Good. Yes, Peter is the man, we're working. We came to the right place, we came to the right place. <laughs> now by the time we repaired the E46, it was too late to get back on the track, so we waited for the next morning where it was very wet. So the M3 is back on the road, a minor hiccup, but thanks to Peter, what an absolute legend. We have a new throttle actuator, which apparently again is another common problem on these, but it is fixed and it wasn't cheap, around 300 euros and that's for a second hand one. But nevertheless, we're back on the road and today, as you can see, it is very wet. But the M3 has only managed one lap, one successful lap, so, it's only right for a wet lap. But I'm sorry, I am gonna have to finish the video here. If you wanna see the full lap, I will post it on my Instagram right here. Thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Whoa! Wow! <laughs> okay, super sketchy. Super, super sketchy right now.